Hello, my name is Duncan Foley and we're going to work through um, a tutorial uh, called Manufacturing Widgets. Uh, we're going to be using uh, Flexing um, 2020. So have a very quick look at uh, what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to create a very basic um, Flexing model. And uh, this model is going to uh, progress into quite a complex um, overall simulation so uh, it's a standard source queue processor sync uh, we'll add an exponential uh, distribution to it then we're going to uh, add a bit of diversity have uh, some red yellow blue boxes going through uh, we're going to use a slightly different way of doing things um, than what we've done in the past and then we're going to um, use a uh, arrival schedule system with a repeat uh, to repeat everything uh, after 90 seconds. So you can see that we're going to have a product one and a contour two of one, and it's going to have a, an item type called type, and it's going to be called number one. So uh, item type three, we're going to get three qu quantities of three boxes. Hopefully, it can make a little bit more sense as we move along. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, the processor send 20% uh, to rework and 80% to complete. And then we're going to progress to a little bit more, making some built, uh, build some uh, transport and decision logic into uh, the model. So um, let's have a look, so we'll move further on. Uh, so we're going to ask uh, one uh, forklift truck to only transport one type of uh, boxes and the other one forklift truck to tra uh, transport two different types of boxes, case three and case default. And finally, we're going to add some uh, nodes and decision uh, along the nodes. And so the, uh, the um, forklift trucks transport in a certain direction. And eventually we're going to have two lots of um, nodes and models, sorry, two lots of uh, nodes transporting the, uh, uh, the boxes around those paths. And uh, then we're going to add a return conveyor all the way back round uh, for the rework. And finally, we're going to uh, use the multiprocessor uh, to do uh, some more advanced uh, work, taking into account uh, certain features of the flow item. So this is quite a quite a, a, a long model and stuff. And I may at times sort of pause the recording and sort of jump forward so you're not just seeing me drag things on it uh, and stuff. So let's go to uh, Flexin, start a new model. It's all, uh, we're going to work in seconds today. And we'll bring in a source, a queue. Just going to put it a little bit down there. Processor. and a sync. Connect them up as we would normally be using the A key. Remember it's directional, so we must go from, uh, from the source to the queue and not the queue to the source. Let's open up the source. And we want this to change from inter time exponential 10 uh, to statistical distribution log normal two. And that's going to be 26.3. Uh, you could leave this uh, alone but uh, in the the booklet it says change that to two 
it won't have any effect for uh, our results but just to be a little bit consistent so we've got this uh, profile of uh, how parts arrive apply okay uh, I'm going to uh, save my work so let's uh, what I call this Tutorial booklet five. Okay, so I am um, built our standard model. Now, what we want to do is have uh, uh, three different types of boxes and uh, arriving at uh, specific times and uh, at different quantities. Uh, so let's open the properties window of the source. I'm going to go to triggers and we're going to use on exit. So we look, uh, so we can do uh, set color by case dependent on what version of flexing uh, you're using uh, this might be uh, you might have to use uh, color by uh, flow item or item just going to click on the plus sign so we've got uh, case one case two and then the third case which is confusingly called um, default so let's change the default to blue. Case one to red. Um, where are we? Red, there we go. And the next one to yellow. Okay, and let's apply that. Go to uh, the sources source window and uh, change the interval time to uh, arrival schedule. We want the schedule to repeat itself, so don't forget to press repeat with three products so uh, we want uh, something uh, to arrive after one second after two seconds then after three seconds and we want just to add another label there we're going to call this uh, type what type of box and we're going to have type 1, type 2, type 3 and we know that we uh, we want a quantity of 1 of type 1, a quantity of 2 of type 2 and 3 of type 3 and we want to, um, to arrive after 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds and then we want it to repeat after 90 so we need to put an, uh, an extra one in there and say 90 and we don't want anything to happen you can put a number in the type if you want um, but what, what's going to happen is after one second we'll get uh, flow item type number one and we, there'll be one of them after two seconds we'll get two um, flow item types twos and then after three we'll get three uh, of t uh, item type three then nothing will happen until 90 seconds and then it will repeat itself so let's apply that and say OK Let's just uh, get a little bit closer. I'm going to reset and run my model. So after one second, we get a one red, then two, two yellow, then three blue. Okay. And we can see the clock ticking down. Wait a little bit. 
and after 90 seconds you can see it all starts again so so that's working that's working fine so let's um we need to now introduce the idea of a, of a scrap so i am just going to zoom out over i'm going to delete this find it easy deleting and stuff uh, then recreating i'm going to create two queues join the first one up using an a and then a second one up using an a i'm going to rename this one rework and you can click on the bottom to go to the next object that is the same um, and i want that to be complete and apply that And the decision for the uh, which, which um, uh, output port um, we use obviously comes from the processor. While we're here, let's rename this to um, automatic wrapping processor and go to the flow and it's currently set at first available so the first available would be the rework and it would always go to the rework because um, it will just fill up until that uh, queue gets full and it's currently uh, set to maximum quantum of a thousand but this isn't what we want to do we want 20 percent to go to there and 80 percent to go to there um, so uh, let's change uh, center port and um, we'll go to uh, the random and go by percentage. We've want got two options, um, sorry, two splits and we want 20% to go to port one. Yep. And we want 8% to, to go to port two. If we apply that, say okay. Zoom out a little bit, reset and run the model. Okay, so that looks so it's predominantly going to rework, which is not what I wanted. So let's just check I've done that correctly. 20% to port one and 8% port two. Let's just check that port two sorry port one is rework so we go to output it is reworked complete so let's just reset and run it a little bit longer and maybe a little bit faster and see if it catches up yeah it does it was just uh, uh unusual so so you can see if i could crank the the model up that it yeah yeah that has worked Stop and reset again. Uh, so uh, now what we want to do is build a, a little bit of decision uh, making in in here. So um, let's delete the uh, the complete and just create a sync because we, we don't need we don't need to see it building up now. I'm just joining up with an A key. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Want to get myself a little bit more space from it for my transporters and stuff to do a little bit of work. There we go. So let's get a, a transporter into the scene. Uh, let's connect the transporter to the processor using an S key. So it's S. Double click on the uh, processor. Go to floor. It's currently set by percentage, but it's not using the transport. So we click on the transport, and we know it's got a, a center port connection. And we can check that by going to the center port, and it's connecting to the transporter. So. Yes, use transport and get the transport from the center port connection. 
So hopefully that should work. Let's stop the model. Things seem to be okay. Uh, let's drain, uh, bring another transporter in, put it next to it. I'm going to double click on that transporter, <coughs> go to general, change its color from yellow to red, apply, you can see it's gone red there. Let's change the uh, maximum speed from 2 to uh, 0 0.5. And you can see the that's 0 0.5 meters per second. So apply, click on that button there, and just ch change the other one to 0 0.5. And now we need to connect the um, red transporter to the uh, processor as well. Remember the S key uh, is not directional. Uh, other than like the A key is directional. So we need to go from the queue to the processor. It doesn't really matter if we uh, which direction we do for the S key. Now let's open the floor tab and change the transporter from center port to um, port by case. So we'll. So currently we just simply request uh, tra uh, transporter one, and if transporter one's busy, we'll request transporter two. But we want to change that now to um, center port by case. Uh, let's just click on this two times. So it will, uh, we're going to case is a flow item. So we created flow items one, two, and three right at the beginning. And if it's flow item one, we want it to take it to port, uh, uh, get the transporter from port two, which will be the, uh, the red transporter. If it's uh, a flow item two or anything else, which would be three, get the transporter from center port one, which is the yellow transporter. So let's apply that and okay. Just gonna slow this down so we can hopefully see it. So reset run. So the red box, it picks up the red box, the yellow box and the blue box and the red one just takes the red, uh, the red one. So here it is, there you go. So that's working. So that's, so that's floor by case. At the moment, our transporters are just doing the, uh, the quickest route. I'm just gonna move them back so I can just uh, build a little bit of a, a pathway for it to go around. And um, I'm going to get some network nodes. I'm going to hold the F key down and create a total of four. If you don't like just the dots and you want to see a number, uh, which I normally do, uh, I'm going to um, go to edit show name. Edit show name. Okay, so I can see that network node number one is there. Okay.
and let's connect the processor to network node 1, network node 1 to 2, 2 to the sync, network node 2, and so forth. If we look carefully, you can see that the uh, uh, the network nodes are joined up, but they've got uh, two green arrows in. So uh, this would mean that the, the the transporters can go up and down here. Really, what we want to do is force a nice loop around. Um, it would naturally take the shortest route. All right, so let's double click on network node one. And we can see the pathways it is currently connected to uh, network node 2 and 4. Let's change the connection to network node 2 to pass to, to no connection. If we apply that, you can see that this has gone red. So the, com the transporter cannot go down this route. It can go back up that route, but it can't go down it. So it's going to have to go from one to four to three to two to one. So let's apply that and say OK. Let's connect these uh, transporters to our network nodes. We need an A key. And you can see a red line there. If we run this model now and a 20% um, rework comes, uh, and it wants to go up there. It, it would uh, it, it would crash because it can only go down these routes. Uh, but um, if we're fortunate uh, that the 80% coming down here comes for a little while, uh, we should be able to see it working for a little while until no, that's very. Uh, yeah, it basically saying it can't go up there. Let's see if we can try it again and see if we get another one and to see if we're unlucky. No, we're un we're not going to get it. Um, so let's just move this back here. I should just reset it. Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, create uh, four, uh, more network nodes here. So let's connect a network node here, another one here, and another one here. And let's join them up, join them up to a network node 1 using uh, an A key. And really, we, we need to work out where we can, where we want to uh, put the uh, no connection. So I'm going to do it here. So actually, it'd be nice if I could. I'm going to go around again and just uh, uh, show the names. So that's five, six, and all. That should be seven. So I'm going to unblock the path from five to six. Um, sorry. So uh, we're at five, go to six, uh, let's have a no connection there and apply it and say OK. Let's reset and run the model. OK, we seem to have a problem here. Um, let's just stop that. OK, the, uh, what the error was, I'd, I'd forgotten to connect uh, network node 6 to the rework. So if I connect that to there, reset and run. So you can see it's going around the networks, uh, nodes path. It seems to be quite unfortunate that we get uh, the first uh, blocks coming off the uh, the wrapper, uh, 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 the, re uh, the reworks, but 
You can see at the moment that uh, everything seems to be working absolutely fine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is stop the model, reset, and we're going to progress further up here. We're going to um, add a multiprocessor in. And then we're going to uh, send a conveyor all the way back around um, to snap to the queue. So let's get the... Um, let's start with a curve Q. I mean, so, if I'm honest, I, I, I do find uh, conveyors building them uh, quite quite confusing. The main thing to remember is look for the little uh, arrow. Um, if it's pointing in the wrong direction, you can always reverse it. Um, the sizes for this conveyor, uh, these conveyors um, really doesn't matter. I am going to add a little bit of height, height on them um, as I go around just to show you that you can do that. Um, so let's put that in there. Click. And you should see A little, a little connection box there. there we go so let's zoom out I'm going to ink uh, so it's currently set at one is the height so let's maybe make it five five meters high well that seems a bit long let's go a bit let's go a bit easy on that so let's go two and let's bring another com curve conveyor in I'm just going to edit this round. You can either edit it here um, by changing the numbers. So that's let's just put it there. And I just want to change the end of that to point in the opposite direction. That looks about right, but I noticed that the um, the conveyor is uh, traveling in the wrong direction, so I'll just reverse it. I also know that at the end of here I set to two, so I'm going to make these both two. There we go, and just snap that on there. Okay. And then let's build a conveyor back round. Um, as my just zoom out a little bit so work out my distances. So I want it to come back down to here. So I'm going to just stretch it. Actually, what is it? Ten. So let's change that to twenty. See if that looks. That's 20. Looks like they're pointing in the wrong direction as well. So let's go there. 20 doesn't look long enough. Change it to 30. Um, yeah, maybe. I can always come back and change it. I'm going to go from 2. I'll keep it to 2. Have another con curve conveyor. Uh, that seems to be okay. I do know I need to be starting at two. Let's just about to zoom out. Um, probably going to miss it a little bit. It's so radius four, so I'm going to change it to six for me. 
be so far off. Going in the right direction, so it's snapping on. And get the oh, a straight. Um, let's just move this back. I'm going to change this a little bit. Let's just get that a bit. And let's change that to 50. Let's go right round. Just about there. Let's snap it on. That looks good. Uh, put one more, see if I can get one more big. Uh, let's just reverse that. Uh, I want to do a, a big. See if eight radius will do. Maybe nine. It's currently twenty six. Let's see if twenty eight will. Nope. Thirty two. Okay, so there we go. So, so we've got the parts coming around, going to the rework. We're going to go to the uh, multi processor, then send it all the way back round and send it back round to the uh, to the queue. Just move the queue. Just a little bit, so it looks a bit nicer. Okay. Let's uh, want a, an operator now. So let's get an operator. Put him next to the processor. And let's zoom up a little bit. Let's connect the rework to the uh, uh, multiprocessor using an A key and the multiprocessor to the conveyor. Let's connect the operator to the rework using an S key and to the multiprocessor as well. Let's open the multiprocessor, go to flow, and we're going to we're going to use a transporter and apply it. Say OK. Open up the rework. Go to flow, and we're going to use the transporter as well. So it's going to call up the uh, the operator. If we run the model now, let's just um, reset and run. It all comes round. Uh, so what we can work out here. 
is we've not connected the uh, the, com the last conveyor to the uh, the queue. So do that with an A key. Okay, let's go back here. That's one little thing we've done, sorted out. Now, now we need to do uh, set up the uh, the multiprocessor. So let's open up its uh, settings. Currently, only get one processor, so I mean it's a multi processor and um, do one thing. Uh, so we know we're going to have three. So let's go to the first one, let's rename it and call it uh, Open Box. And that's going to take 120 seconds. So we're going to, somebody's going to have to open the box. Next one is to um, re repair. Box. But the repair box depends on the case, what, what type of box it is. So, uh, no changes to repair. So we want uh, values by case. We know that we've got three boxes, case uh, item type one, two, and three. So if it's um, an item type one, it will take 60 seconds. If it's an item type two, it will take 120 seconds. And if it's an item type three, or whatever's left, which is the three, it's going to take 180 seconds. And let's go to the last one. Let's rename this to uh, Unload Box. And that is going to take 120 seconds. And apply it and say OK. This is, um, in truth, it's very hard to see all of the, all the, all the changes you've made there, uh, unless you uh, go through this st a different type of um, playing back. So we normally do the run. And you can see here that uh, it's running as like an animation. If you do step, it will change every every time. So it will jump to the next operation. So if you do step again, and there, so this is, let's have a look, so if we can grab it. Item type one. Um, so it, uh, standard 120 to open the box. Item type one, so it should take 60 um, to repair the box. And 120 to, to, uh, to load it back up. So you could check the values there. So it's quite odd because other things are happening in the background as you step in. Uh, but you should be able to see that the boxes take a different amount of time based on um, how... I'm going to just press run now. Let's have a look. There we go. So what we've learned here is using the case by case, introduce multiprocessors, introduce networks, uh, int introduced uh, transporters that are only selecting one particular type of box and rework. We could improve this model and uh, feel free to do this. Uh, one option would be to, uh, when objects come back around and they've been reworked, it'd be nice to be able to see 
um, within the model which ones have and have not been reworked. Uh, so it'd be nice if you could change the colour of the box as it comes down the rework uh, conveyor to maybe black. Also, it'd be nice if the uh, the box doesn't have to go to the back of the queue, which it will do at the moment. Uh, we want it to jump to the front of the queue, so we want some sort of priority for uh, objects that have been uh, uh, rejected and started again. Okay, uh, thank you a lot for listening, and I hope that was helpful for you. Um, thank you.